We have another copycat killer. Does that mean Dexter had a second brother that he doesn't know about? Or is it just some lame guy trying to be a vigilante? Welcome back, guys, to Fog Entertainment. It's time to review Dexter. Episode 6 of Season 2. We're at the halfway point of the second season. And this one is called Dex. Lies and videotape. Pretty good title, I think, for an episode considering what happened. And yes, we do have decks, we do have lies, and we do have videotapes because we now see that Dexter is screwed. His boat is being covered by the videos and the cameras, and basically his time, as John Cena would say, is up. Yeah, Masuka's gonna catch him. Masuka, that crazy motherfucker, is gonna catch him. Anyone could catch him. Dexter, his time's running up. My yeah. time is up. Your time is now. We, all, we also learned in this episode that uh, it looks like Dexter's becoming Lundy's favourite Morgan. However, it's more of a case of that Lundy just cannot stand uh, Masuka and that Masuka, he just d detests Masuka. And I actually kind of felt a bit sorry for Masuka here. I can see why someone as serious as Big John Lundy would detest Masuka. Dexter's way more of his sort of guy than Masuka is. I also thought it was funny at the beginning start of the episode. Lundy is of he's said that he's going to be reading everyone's emails. He's going to have everyone's history. And Masuka confronts him and says, I can, uh, "Is it true? But you've been able to access all emails. If so, I can <laughs> I can explain the she male porn." And Masuka thinks that she male porn is the reason why Lundy doesn't want him working around him anymore, but I just don't think Lundy likes Masuka. And I can see why. He's got a... He is, but... You know what? Like I said, Big John, he's serious. Masuka's like the polar opposite. Dexter's his man. And that's exactly where this has went. Yeah. By now, though, Dexter is pretty much... Let's speak about Dexter. He's, he's pretty much learned from the recordings that his mother was having an affair with Harry. Harry was the one that pushed her to tell more about these drug dealers and he actually asked her to steal a brick not just a fucking sample one full brick and there was what like 300 in this container yeah i mean jesus christ so yeah it's fair to say that harry pushed for this and didn't really care about his witness the fact that he was sleeping there harry is the one that essentially got dexter's mother's killed and, and what well, mother not mother she only had one but yeah, at this point, I think Dexter is losing faith in uh, Harry Morgan, and is he losing faith in the code? I'd be losing faith in the code. The code's broken. Code breaker. Honestly, it's done. Harry's Harry's gone. Harry is too far gone. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, we get so we get the first case of this so-called copycat killer who has been inspired by the Bay Harbor butcher. The police investigate a man that says he was attacked by the butcher. At first, we're supposed to believe that this man is, is making it up, maybe looking for a bit of, I don't know, credit, a bit of fame. Coin. 15 minutes of fame, buddy. But it actually turns out that this did happen to him and that he was attacked and he did manage to break free. But Dexter knows he didn't do it. So a copycat killer is legit because there's someone actually out trying to kill people in the same way the Bay Harbor Butcher is. The only difference is they're probably a hundred times worse than Dexter could ever be. They're so sloppy, they're not doing the job. They, they let the guy escape, first of all. We could argue Dexter let Big Chino escape, but... I mean, I don't, well, he let the other guy go as well. well I kind of voluntarily let him go, but... He's been getting sloppy, Dexter. I mean, but I think if you're gonna let one guy escape, Little Chino's the biggest fuck up. Literally. Yeah. But Lundy tells everyone that the FBI will take over the case if another killer is committed by a copycat killer. Therefore, they know they have to catch this guy. And Dexter ends up finding the copycat killer, and he kills him because the copycat killer thinks that him and Dexter can team up. But Dexter doesn't really play well with others and. He's like, um... So you're not going to kill me? No, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, this kind of reminded me of the uh, the debate with the, the car salesman. Yeah, they think they're on the same page, and in reality, they're not on the same page. I don't... Dexter's like, I don't need to kill you. And the guy's like, oh, thank God, that's a relief. He's like, no, I'm going to kill you. I just don't need to do it. Dexter's on the final chapter, and these two are on the front page. So yeah, Dexter kills this guy, and he thinks by doing this, it will be a way to discourage people from being copycat killers and there's, I guess there's less killers out there plus he wants to do this for the police so that the the case doesn't get taken away. You know it was a lot of like two for ones, a lot of things got wiped out with one kick here for Dexter, set it up that way FBI doesn't get involved and it disheartens 
other people if they wanted to be yeah the Bay Harbor Boots. So I mean this worked out good for Dexter, two birds, one stone kind of thing. Uh, we then see that the cameras are getting set up and the footage is going to be available anytime soon. So Dexter goes into panic mode and he decides that he is going to pull the fire alarm at work. Everyone leaves. Uh, depart for Dexter who sneaks into a room. We then have Masuka. He comes in and he tells everybody, he tells, well, no one's there. He tells everyone to get out and then he says to himself, respect the fist. <sighs> Makes well, a weird fucking noise, honestly. <laughs> well, uh, waving right his, while waving his glow stick about. Probably the scariest scene of this show. What the fuck is this guy doing? Um, uh, if you Dexter jumped out and made the exact same noise, what would have happened? Honestly, what, 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 what? Masuka's cards are on the table. Yeah, and Dexter's is. Dexter man, he, he manages to escape Masuka though when he deletes the footage of him at the marina. Uh, Rita's mother suggests that Dexter brings Lila to the dinner. Obviously, Rita and more so her mother just don't trust Dexter with Lila. Um, Dexter is uncomfortable with Lila when she continues to talk, talk about to talk about him. No wonder, man. What, what does Dexter think is going to fucking happen here? You need to lay out the ground rules, right? You don't get into specifics, you don't say this, you don't see the shit I've told you, I haven't told her, so let's well, not even get fucking into it. But that's not Lila's fault, that's Dexter's fault. She she's she should think that he's actually talked about this stuff with you. Yeah, so uh, she brings up the death of his mother and everyone's shocked because Dex hasn't explained this to Rita yet, he's not talked about this to Rita, he's not really talked about anything no. to Rita. So this comes as a shock, uh, but Lila leaves and Rita thinks that that, that, that Rita, Rita thinks that Lila's good essentially and she thinks that uh, you know this could be a good uh, partnership for Dexter and that this sponsor's working well but later that night when Rita goes to Dexter's apartment for some fun time the answer machine comes on and Lila is on it and she talks about how Rita is a little Martha Stewart she calls her mother a bitch, which uh, I don't think we can really deny, to be fair. No. Nope. And then she talks about the road trip and how they spent the night together in a hotel. And obviously, Rita is upset by this. She doesn't really want anything to do with Dexter, accuses him of being a liar and a cheat before Dexter can even explain himself. So Dexter can't really do anything. And at this point, it's like, okay, Dexter does what... I guess this was unfortunate to be honest the answer machine one yeah it was I can accept this one but the the dinner was not yeah so it's unfortunate but Dexter thinks that he's now broke up so he goes to be with Lila and he ends up sleeping with Lila after it got a little bit physical um I think these two make a good couple or whatnot but anyway they have sex and then Rita decides that you know what she should have helped Dexter out so she calls Dexter over and Dexter is sitting in front of Rita, She's be, he's been interrogated. Rita says, did you have sex with her that night on the, in the hotel when you had the road trip? And Dexter's like, no, I didn't. Just not tonight. Not that night. <laughs> uh, and then Rita realises, damn it, it happened on all night. She tells Dexter to get out and Dexter at this point goes back to Lila because, I mean, that's all he can really do. That's, he's, that's all I've got left. That's all I've got left. So that's how the episode ends with um, Dexter going back to Lila's place. But before that, we did have um, a pretty large part of the episode that was dedicated to Dexter. Kind of acting a, a, a bit like a bitch, but I guess... It was. You know what? No, what? This outburst... I, I, want, I want to suspend it. I want to suspend it. So Dexter goes tries to go back to his office. I guess this is sometime after he set off the fire alarm. And he sees Dokes in his office listening to the tapes of the recordings of Harry and his mother. And Dokes is like, yeah, I knew there was something fucked up about you. And he's wondering why he's listening to this. Dexter tells him, you've got no right to be in here. Get out. But um, Dokes isn't really listening. Dokes like, you know, I heard, I heard you. I just I just don't give a right, shit. Right, so everyone in the force knows that Harry's his Dexter's dad, yes? Yep. But no one knows that that's his mum. Yep. So why didn't he just fucking play it cool? I'm just listening to my dad's old tape, Dokes. You fucking motherfucker. <laughs> Why didn't he just say that? He's fucking losing the marbles. Uh, we don't know what he's heard before, though, you know? I, I don't know. But... Alright, yeah, but but it's not like a 30-year-old tape is going to incriminate Dexter. No, he it doesn't. You can just say, here, I miss my dad, I don't want to listen to him on the tape. I mean, that's all he's got to fucking say. It doesn't. What's Dokes going to do? Now, Dokes did say he, knew, he thought Dexter was connected to the ice truck killer. 
I guess this is a connection, but can Doc's put the pieces together? I mean, he's basically connected everything. He's just not. He's not got the pieces. He's got the or he's got the pieces, but he's not connected them. Yeah, but he doesn't have any like tangible proof that puts Dexter in the the, the ice truck killer's uh, you know connection. No, but now he knows that Dexter smothers. Friggin' Laura Moser, and if he can find it, the ice truck killer was Brian yeah, Moser, then... and he didn't... Dexter gave him it on a silver platter. But Dexter storms out, and after... The well, Dokes wants him to hit him, but Dexter doesn't do that. He goes to speak to Maria, and Maria tries to get through to Dokes, but Dokes isn't really having it. Um, See, Dokes is a straight shooter. Any other person would have leveraged what he knows about her in order for him not to get suspended or something. But he's like, ah, fuck it. Fuck Dexter. He's a creep. He's a silent bastard. And I don't think Dokes will stop until he takes Dexter down because he thinks that Dexter is involved with something. He doesn't trust them and he will keep going. I'm intrigued, right? Obviously Dokes has killed people, but, you know, all within the... Reason. Reason. Well, apart from, I, mean, I guess he did kill that guy under the bridge. Yeah, but that was so like, if Dokes, that, I think, no, he was... was that, yeah, but if Dokes gets, that? Uh, yeah, but if Dokes gets too close, is Dexter going to be like, here... I'm still following the code because you jobbed that guy under the bridge. Nah, that was a legit kill. Yeah, but maybe Dex, maybe Harry's, maybe Harry's fucking new code can be can be bent and be like. You yeah, think Harry, right. Harry can patch in a new code? Can Harry edit the code from the grave? They have to be bad people, Dex, or black. <laughs> anyway, that that was it. I, I I thought this was like probably the weakest episode of the season so far. So I'm going to get a six. It was Dexter going through his emotions. Yeah, you know what? I'm actually going to get a five. I think everything that was like bad, everything that he could have fixed it all. For a guy that's so smart, I think he fucked up every opportunity this episode. Now maybe I shouldn't downgrade an episode for like him, what his actions, but it was so avoidable. But then well, if he if he if he's so avoidable. Right, it, the dinner thing, if he just tells her not to speak about that shit with dokes, like I said, he could have just handled it so much better. But the guy, he doesn't really think like normal people. How is he supposed to know what Lyle was going at? Well, like, well, fuck's sake, he should. That's why we're normal and not serial killers. Uh, okay. Dexter is, anyway, I'm going to have five. Five out of ten, there you go, guys. Six and a half, six, uh, five and a half out of ten. Catch you in the next one. Till then, though, peace.